Hello everyone, this is Carrie Sylvester I'm here for this month's installment of Internet Lead Gen. I'm looking at a series of sessions and this month we're focusing on ratings, reviews, and testimonials. Um, if you, if everyone could just do me a quick favor and just confirm again, raise your hand, do a quick question to show that you can hear me, but we're going to get started. So before the internet, you know, our reach, when we really wanted to look and find products or services, was mostly friends and family that we got opinions from. It was really hard to go beyond that because there wasn't really an easy way to identify others who might provide us with some meaningful recommendations, information, based on their specific experiences that were applicable to our situation. But now with the internet um, and what has dramatically changed, we have found an easy way to access a large selection of people to provide us with information on just about any product service um, service provider. You know, we're, we're planning our summer vacation right now for my family and the first place that I go are looking at what other people say about the resorts that we're looking at. And we'll go into a little bit about how to really capture and leverage those because it's part of our day-to-day -day norm. Well, let's, let's backtrack for just a second and reframe why we're here in this series of six sessions. Um, this is about Internet Lead Gen, um, which is a purposeful strategy to promote your brand and to drive consumers to you online. That's at the very beginning. Um, and we must start there because technology is changing in an increasingly rapid pace. Um, we no longer categorize buyers and sellers according to whether or not they use the Internet. Everyone uses it. And so it's a combination of both our strategy and our brand that brings lead generation to you. So if we look at the first three sections that we're focusing on are building your brand. So creating and maintaining your internet presence. What are you saying about yourself? What are other people saying about you? Because if you don't have that solid platform, it doesn't matter how much internet lead gen you have to drive people to your traffic, you've got to have that online presence. So this is the last of our series of really focusing on your brand. The next set of series um, we'll go into is your strategy, which is how are we going to get those people to find you on the web? So let's jump into ratings and reviews. Um, you know, the days of consumers just wandering aimlessly into establishments, whether it's walking into a barbershop, a restaurant, a dry cleaner, being unaware of the level of service to expect, those days are over. Um, that was a, a great quote from Inc. Uh, magazine, Inc.com. Um, Think about it in your daily life. Every day we have these sites. Yelp, Google, Foursquare, Yahoo, the list just goes on. I'm using um, travel sites right now to review um, resorts. Um, but they give you a quick rundown of almost every business at your fingertips. I even did this with uh, finding a doctor in the past week. Read, read ratings and reviews on their staff and the hospitals that they use um, to really find out what type of service to expect. Um, so think about it before we go to this. Think about yourself. How do you approach online shopping, finding a new restaurant? You Google it. Just about every product or service has some type of, re of a review. And here's what's interesting. 90% of consumers trust peer recommendations while only 14% trust your traditional advertising. So all that work that you put into creating a brand is extremely important. You have to have that. But 14% of people are going to trust it. So let's now make sure we get that 90% of the people who trust peer recommendations. You know, in fact, a Harvard Business School study um, in 2011 found that when restaurants increased their Yelp rating by one star, so that's an increase of one star on Yelp, their revenue increased between 5 and 9%. That's a big swing, especially in the restaurant industry. 5 to 9% is a huge swing. And there's even a study at Cornell University that determined that increasing review scores by one point on a five-point scale allowed hotels to increase their prices by 11.2% and still maintain their occupancy. So we can see that direct correlation between letting other people talk about us, increasing those stars, and increasing our revenue. So how does that apply back to you? Let's talk about those conversations that you have about those commissions. Those conversations going away um, because other people are saying that you're worth the commission. Um, every single dime of that commission that we earn, you deserve. Uh, now in contrast, a few bad reviews can quickly torpedo a hotel or a restaurant's reputation. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that um, at the end of how to manage when that situation may come up. So let's talk about why do they matter. And I always start with my favorite quote from Intuit. 
Um, a brand is no longer what we tell consumers it is. It is what consumers tell each other it is. That's from Scott Cook, the founder of Intuit. Um, really one of the most um, innovative companies, they really reinvented themselves and part of their reinvention was really looking at how they represented themselves and how they were, they were using those peer recommendations to build what their brand was. Um, because the information age has created really an information empowered consumer. Consumers expect to be able to get any information they want, including reviews. And who's driving this change? Well, it's that category of our, of our consumers called those millennials. Um, they are driving that change. And just a few interesting stats on why this is so important to them. 1% um, said a compelling advertisement would make them trust a brand more. 1%. Just piece on that for just a moment. Now, 33% rely on blogs before they make a purchase. And 62% said that if a brand engages them on social networks, they're more likely to become a loyal customer. Um, so what, what are all these stats telling us? Um, that millennials, they're really not influenced by our advertising. Um, because for millennials, traditional advertising, it really is not authentic. And that's what they're looking for is authentic information. Um, and it's why they re read the review blogs. 33% rely on the blogs um, before they make that purchase. Com that's in comparison to fewer than 3% for TV news, magazines, and books. So they're not going to our traditional methods for researching. They're actually going to blogs of hearing what other people have to say. Um, they're looking to, so to social media for authentic feedback, especially content written by their peers whom they trust. Um, they focus on user-generated content. And what is that user-generated content? When they read a blog, the blog is important, but what's most important is that content that comes afterwards when people are commenting back and forth. Um, if you think about when we do read reviews and people are asking each other questions back and forth, that's user-generated content. And what's remarkable is that millennials trust that even more than their family and friends. So have you ever read a, an article and all of a sudden you read the first part of it, it's kind of interesting, but you skip down to the comments before you finish reading the article and the commentary is really exciting. You might go back to the article. That's what they're reading as they're jumping down to that commentary. Um, and why does it matter? that if it's on social media, through blogs, through Facebook, um, is because that's where they want to engage. Um, and so if you engage with them there um, and let them see the inner self, the authentic side of who you are, they are, more, they are much, more loyal, much more likely to become a loyal customer. So let's talk a little bit about what this means to you. Um, we take, we call this controlled versus uncontrolled branding. So controlled branding are all the things that we've talked about and really in the first two sessions that we talked about, which is really setting up who you are. What is your brand process? Um, what is it that, that you want people to know about you? When you have to sing your brand uh, proposition from the rooftops, what are you saying? You're promoting this through your social media efforts, your paid advertising, your website, your signs, your email campaigns, your print materials versus your uncontrolled brand. This is what other people are saying about you. This is what people are saying about you on Yelp, on Facebook, on Realtor.com, Zillow, Trulia. Um, this is what other people, and this is why it's uncontrolled. You can't control what they're going to say um, about you, but it's vitally important to establishing who you are and really supporting that brand promise that you've been making. So when we talk about what types of things you get between controlled and uncontrolled, let's talk through what those differences are and then where that credibility comes in, where you want to spend your time. So first we want to talk about ratings. Ratings are a quantitative rating assigned by your client based on production or performance from an independent source. Um, it's really what it, it's that star is what it's looking at. Um, reviews are the commentary that your clients write about you. So if the rating are the stars, the reviews are the words that they invest the time. Um, they write about your business. It's posted on a search engine or a review website. And then, then final is testimonial. And this is the commentary your, your client writes about your business that's posted on your website. The big difference between testimonial and reviews is that authenticity. Um, reviews may or may not be filtered by you. 
testimonial, if it's not something that you like and haven't helped craft, um, you're probably not going to put it on your site. If someone has any type of a complaint, you're probably not going to put it in the testimonial area on your site. Um, and so that's a really big difference between reviews and testimonial. Testimonials, you are 100% choosing which ones you're going to use and handpicking. You're soliciting that specifically as a testimonial versus review, which is really them saying what their thoughts are um, as they go through. So if we've got ratings, reviews, and testimonials, which one works the best for you? And that's where we look at a credibility scale um, because they all influence consumer behavior. Um, but some are really held at a higher level of credibility than others. So if we start with testi testimonials, they're housed on your site. They're trusted less. You need to have them there. It looks strange if you don't have any testimonials, um, but they're not trusted a whole lot. Um, it's more of a check mark. Yes, they have their testimonials. That's about what you're going to get from the testimonials. Now, ratings, believe it or not, ratings are actually between testimonials and reviews um, as we look at these. Um, they are more trusted than testimonials because they're typically independent, um, but they're, they're based on incomplete data sets, um, which causes a little bit of distrust, which means just clicking on a star, you don't know what actually gave that person that star, um, or the one to five rating, whatever the rating scale is, it's a number without really meaning. Um, and so that's why it's got some credibility to say, okay, well, they have stars. Um, the example I was give was when I was looking at choosing some medical doctors the past week, and looking at them, it was great if I saw at sites where they had stars, but it really had no relevance unless I could actually read commentary. So that's why it gives some level of credibility, um, but it still isn't 100% trustworthy yet. Um, now, reviews are really where you're going to get the most credibility um, in, in incorporating reviews into your strategy. Um, they are independent. They're trusted the most. Um, and I think when you put in the perspective of being able to give context to why someone got a five star or a five rating, um, what was important to that person? When we look at resorts, the commentary means the most to me because someone may have disliked what the pool was like, but what they disliked is actually what I like. Um, so it really gives that, really helps to give that context to people. So that's why I put a lot more credibility into um, reviews than anything else. So if we know reviews are that important, let's talk about where do we manage those reviews. Let's talk about a few best practices. First, um, as we go through these sites, claim your free profile. Um, Most of sites, it's easy, set it up. Do your control branding message, set up who you are, um, make sure it's, it's setting the message that you want to send. Um, keep it up to date. I always like to recommend to people that when you are setting up these profiles, put an annual objective, just like when we clean out our closets every year for spring cleaning and make sure we donate um, the things that we've outgrown um, or toys that we need to pass along. Do that once a year with all of your profiles. It will take you half a day to go through every profile, update those pictures, um, update your, your biographies that you've written on there, your achievements. Um, make sure to, to touch those. These are, these are things that are really representing you. So put it on your calendar and update those. Um, I use the same or very similar photos across all the sites. Um, so as you're going through and setting up all these profiles, make it consistent. Make it your, your professional image. Um, don't make it your casual picture. Make it your business professional picture um, of yourself, your team, your brand, um, and that's consistent across all the sites. Um, people will Google you. They'll find reviews that will come up on multiple sites. You want to look very consistent across these sites. Um, and the number of reviews that you do have is important. Um, so we're going to talk through um, how many you should have um, in just a little bit. Um, but you want to have an active campaign that gets people out there to fill in these reviews for you. Okay. So let's talk specifically about a few of the sites um, that you should set up the free accounts and start tracking some of the reviews. Um, so Zillow Group, they have more than 80 million unique visitors per month. Um, it really, it's the most popular real estate website today. Um, it may change in the future. Today, they are the most popular. Um, Zillow manually checks every review submitted. Um, this is one thing I really do like about what they do. Um, prior to publication to ensure that they meet the review guidelines. Um, and since the Zillow Chula merger, you have one place to update um, your profile and it automatically updates both the websites. 
Um, that is something that, that people weren't aware of, um, especially with the fact that they do check every review that comes in. Now, for your clients, when you send them to Zillow Group, they do have to create an account. Um, and so that is, that's the whole reason why they're offering that, so that they can start marketing them to drive them to the site as well. Um, but they do have to create an account. Okay. Um, Trulia. Um, you'll notice the reviews are the same. And so Trulia is at the top of the um, research sites as well. Um, they do require cus um, consumers to sign up um, to create an account. But you are, if you notice, the reviews are being posted to both sites. So if you send them to Trulia, they create an account, they write a review, it'll go to both places. Um, and same, vice versa. Um, so you can really kill two birds with one stone. And depending on where your clients are coming from, um, might help you choose which one you want to send people to. Okay? Uh, Realtor.com. Um, this is the rounds out the top three of the real estate websites. I believe they actually just maybe jumped up to two again. Um, they launched new profile pages, and these, these are actually quite clean, um, quite beautiful pages. Um, there's not a lot of reviews yet because this is a new feature. So capitalize on this. Um, you can get people to go in and fill out reviews. Um, clients do have to create a free account. Um, one thing I might do, and I actually haven't looked at for each one of them, go in there and tell people how to unsubscribe um, if you're concerned about them being subscribed to um, newsletters um, if they don't want to be. So you can include that in your instructions to people. Um, when they bring in for Realtor.com, ratings, reviews, and testimonials are sourced from three different survey services. Real Satisfied, um, Quality Service Certification, which is QSC, and Testimonial Tree. So if you utilize any one of those services, um, those ratings and review information automatically show up on Realtor.com for you. So it's nice and streamlined for you. And just before we move on to um, pass that, to Yelp is our next one. The difference between getting reviews on Zillow and Trulia, um, Yelp, you're getting reviews directly on those sites. Testimonial Tree, QSC, and Real Satisfied, these are three different services that as a team owner, as an agent, you can actually subscribe to these services and after every dealing, it sends out a full survey to your clients. So not only do you get ratings and review information that you can post on your sites, um, on Realtor.com is where they're integrated. You can also put them on your own website. Um, it also gives you those metrics to help you as you grow your team, to evaluate your team, your services, and see where you want to increase um, and focus. So those are minor differences between just collecting the ratings and reviews and the services such as Testimonial Tree, QSC, and Real Satisfied to really help you manage the, the responses from, from your clients um, to get meaningful information to increase your team's customer satisfaction. Okay, let's talk about Yelp. Um, Yelp has an average of 120 million unique visitors, and Yelpers have written more than 53 million local reviews. Now, this is why I include um, um, Yelp, because remarkably, um, according to Mashable, real estate is the 13th most regularly searched for topic on Yelp. Um, so people are searching for realtors on Yelp. Um, now they have to sign up um, with an account, set up your account as well, um, so you can get those reviews. Um, but that is is on the rise um, to be able to really manage um, reviews through Yelp and get those um, onto the site. It's a great new source for you. Okay, so we've got our different sites. How do you get them? So at the closing table. Um, ask, ask them the right one. You know, I went to an endodontist um, once that they get all of their business through referrals. Um, they have no traditional advertising. And whenever I would leave, they gave me a nice sheet of paper that said, if you participate in social media, please, we, we build our business on referrals and we need your help. We would love to have your help. If you participate in, they use Google+, Yelp, and I think Facebook. Um, if you participate in these sites, please leave us a review. Here's exactly where you do it for each one. Um, so what they gave me when I left was a really great, if I use these sites, please go help them. I knew that they have a referral business, so I enjoyed helping them build a business. Um, they did a great job. And so I had no problem with them asking uh, for them to do that. And they gave me nice step-by-step -step instructions to be able to do it. Um, immediately, obviously, went and did it. Um, take care of them. So give them something at the closing table that thanks them and tells them that this is a referral business and I could really use your help with you telling people what you thought of our services. Um, after the closing table, send a follow-up email. Um, 
um, with links to the site. Uh, number three, ask everyone. This could be a campaign as your 33 touch. If you haven't been managing ratings and reviews to this day, start on your 33 touch. Um, that could be one of the touches you pick up the phone and call people that you've done business with in the last year. Hey, I'm trying to build this up. Would you mind filling out a review for me based on our transaction? Um, and, and it's a great touch to A, stay in contact, part of your 33 touch, and get reviews out of it. Um, now here is the tip. Um, this is something that's really interesting and track this as your clients come to you. The clients who come to you because of a review are inclined to post reviews unsolicited. So if they found you because of a review or they researched you and really read your reviews, after that transaction, there's a good chance that they will actually fill that review out without you even having to ask. So those are great people um, to really make sure that you're getting those reviews from as you build up your review library. Okay, now what about the dreaded bad review? It could happen. Um, now, like I said, most of the sites actually do monitor for foul language, um, things that are inappropriate. I know that there is um, worry and concern in the industry of another real estate agent um, putting in a negative review um, or someone who is putting a review that has nothing to do with the services that you offer, maybe the title agent um, completely dropped the ball and they blame you. So we monitor those. Um, but there are going to be some that people are going to feel more comfortable saying something negative about you through a review rather than face-to-face. -face. So let's talk about how we can manage this because not, it's not the end of the world. Um, you are at the center of a complex transaction with a whole lot of moving parts and things go wrong and they're not always your fault. Um, so it happens. Um, it's important to remember how to handle this. Um, negative reviews can actually help build your own credibility. Um, Remarkably, when everything is perfect, it starts to go back to that credibility scale, starts to look more like a testimonial than actual reviews. So how do we do this? Um, first, respond. Not defensively. Um, apologize. Respond by saying, I'm so sorry that that wasn't a great transaction. I'm so sorry that this fell through. So for whatever it was, acknowledge the fact that something did go wrong. Um, don't get defensive, especially in... Um, these public forums, it's not the place to get defensive. Um, it's your place to take the higher road and say, I'm so sorry, what can we do to help you next time? Look what we've also done. You can actually really just address the issue rather than getting defensive. Um, and be thankful for the feedback. Um, take it with a grain of salt, look at it and say, how does this, how can I improve this process? If I have a lender who is not up to up to task with me, well then let's let's make sure we get that resolved. Um, or if there's something in my process that could have made that easier, let's take that feedback um, and figure out how we can do this differently. And most importantly, um, don't take it personally. Um, it is, as I said, many people are much more comfortable saying something negative when they're typing it into a computer rather than face-to-face. -face. Um, go back, respond, apologize, don't be defensive, take the, take the, the feedback and see if there is something to improve. Um, and don't take it personally. Now, here's the here's the most important tip. 85% um, of consumers, when you do look at these negative reviews, 85% of consumers look at 10 reviews or fewer. So it's very important to manage your reviews and make sure there's always a steady stream of information coming in. So when you do get that negative review, um, address it. Like I said, respond. Uh, make sure that you take the high road, you make sure you're addressing it, you're not hiding behind that review, and then work very purposefully to get 10 new good reviews. Um, people are going to read that first 10 at the most, um, and so manage the bad reviews away um, by getting some good reviews in there. As I mentioned, going back to that 33 touch, it's a great way to pick up the phone and say to those old clients, hey, would you mind posting a review for me? And you can help manage those away. So. You've done two things. You've shown that you're professional, you address it, and you've also gotten good reviews to take its place. So that's how I would handle bad reviews. So that's it for this month. That was ratings and reviews. So with that, we have actually finished up our branding. So we've set up what your website looks like, what it should say about you, what your brand promise is, your social media channels, tips and tricks on really how to help that reinforce that message. Now letting other people tell your story and say what your brand is through ratings and reviews. 
And next month, on April 11th, we'll get started on the strategy section, which our first segment is on search engine optimization before we go into paid traffic advertising and then conversion and closing. Um, thank you all so much for being here this month, and I hope you got some great tips on how to manage ratings and reviews. And we will see you next month, April 11th, to talk about SEO. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.